The question was if the uh, the final will be on um, the eighth. Let me just uh, okay. Let me just open the. Okay. <clears throat> Gore says NAA weekly schedule. So it's going to be on week 13, final test is going to be in the lab one. So the first one is the open session Q&A, and the lab is going to be the 13th. Which brings us to the next thing. What? Which one is week thirteenth? I haven't turned on this computer for a while, so it probably authenticates me on everything, and it doesn't let me move it around. So, uh, looking at the calendar, we are on week 11 now, 12, 13. So it's going to be on, uh, your lab is on Thursday, uh, on Friday, correct? So it's going to be the 8th, right? That's right. So your final is going to be on the 8th. Again, I'm going to do it the exact same way. I'm going to create a... Uh, uh, an, an, a policy and agreement thingy, and in that one, I'm going to explain exactly what's going to be on the on the exam type of questions, topics, things like that. Okay, like the other one. All right, so uh, it's good to be back in person. Let's uh, uh, talk about templates today. So. We don't need this. Before we begin, any uh, questions? Uh, <clears throat> our goal for creating a final is to make it easy to pass, hard to get an A+. Okay. So it's going to be something like that. Hello. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I will try to design the questions to be uh, small pieces of programming questions that target specific type of thing and for that you need to read the questions something that students are not good at they look at the question just writing oh I had the class they write the class and they will waste all their time so you have to be extremely careful to read the question it's possible that I'm gonna read give you a class and I say only do copy constructor on this that's it and then if you start just putting five things over there that you've been asked then you'll be late. So read the questions properly. Okay, it's extremely important. Yes. Of course. So it is quiz exactly like your quiz. You're going to have questions like that. That's going to be around 20% of the mark. Debugging and uh, uh, debugging and walkthroughs is going to be around 20% uh, of the mark. 20 to 30% of the mark. And um, 60, 50 to 60 percent is going to be programming. I haven't decided yet. I think I, this time I want to go with written questions uh, instead of it's instead of uh, multiple choice. Believe it or not, statistically, students do much better on written. With uh, with uh, multiple choice, y you fall in trap very easily. Because again, you don't read. And the, the, the options are very similar, so you select the wrong one. That tends to be the case. I'll see what I can do. It all depends on the amount of time that I have to mark. If I do have enough time to mark, then I will make it uh, 
written. So you can actually write the answers. Oh yes, you exactly like midterm. So you are allowed to bring a reference sheet, you are allowed to bring a blank sheet. You not that you are allowed to, you must bring a reference sheet with your name only, font twenty. Okay? Your name. So when I pass, I can read it. I have weak eyes. I don't want to go like that and try to see <laughs> what you have written. Okay? So I'll put all those things um, on, the, on the agreement. Uh, those people who did not follow the guidelines of submitting code, uh, this time I marked their um, tests afterwards. So to just give them a message. There is no afterwards in final exam, in final assessment. So in final assessment, if you don't submit your marks properly, or you tell me, oh, I, f I forgot to copy and paste and I missed it, stuff like that can't happen anymore. And the final is 30% of your marks, so careful. Okay? You have to be very careful. All right. <clears throat> Shall we start the Schmegledingi? As usual, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to start with uh, familiar sub uh, stuff. So a quick review of what's, what we had before. We're going to have, I'm going to create a, 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 some kind of an interface. And I'm out of interface, I'm going to create a couple of classes that are similar. So you're going to see how they work in everything. And then, then after that, we're going to kick into teaching compiler how to write the code for us. So today, we're going to learn how to train the compiler, tell the compiler the blueprint of writing the code for us so we don't have to. Uh, in the way that you always program, if you write a function and that function uh, seems to be useful with its logic and how it works, you, write, you overload it for different types so it can work for different types. So you have written a program that works with an integer, and you say, oh, it's, it's working perfectly for that. Let me overload it to write to do the exact same thing for doubles. Let me do the, write it again so it works with long integers. So let me do it so it can work with whatever, OK? We're going to teach the compiler to do that for us. So we don't have to overload. And the compiler will write different versions for us at compile time. To do that, first we have to understand oh, a few things. All right. Let's start with this. So very first thing that I'm going to do over here is to create a little cute uh, interface for myself. So we have a class. I call it displayable. Oh, there you go. We have a class, and oh, uh, at the end of the class, people at the end of the class, especially with your, uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, is it good? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Is it good now? Okay. See, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure that it's like an eye exam. <laughs> All right. So. I have a, a, an interface, as you see, it's called displayable, which means anybody who is inheriting from this interface of mine. Why is it an interface? Because it only has pure virtual functions. You got 2% for your final. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so be aware of these questions, you know, that you're going to uh, get uh, marks for it. Be ready to answer. So you got to be quick. <laughs> you got, and by the way, if you have already gotten bonus marks for your uh, test, for your uh, final, you can't do it again. You cannot get twice. So you have to give a chance to others to do it. OK? So you got your 2% in, in the next. Let's see who's going to get the next one. Yeah, I'm going to ask simple questions. Which line is main on? <laughs> <laughs> 2% for me. <laughs> all right. All right. So, so. <laughs> all right. So, um, uh, I'm creating an inter interface. And um, can anybody tell me what is actually a purpose of creating an interface? 
Why do we create interface? An interface. A an interface is an abstract based class, correct? So essentially we cannot create it, we cannot do anything with it. So what is the point of creating an interface? What does an interface do? <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, let, let, me, let me see. I don't even know if it's recording or not, but hey. So who's going to answer? So uh, it will be a raw model derived class. That's a beautiful, actually, thing to say. A role model for, for wow, <laughs> never thought of it that way. It's a role model for a, for a, derived, class. For a derived class. You get the 2% too. That's good. Oh, yeah. All right, so it's a role model. What does it mean, role model? Can anybody tell me what does it mean? It's a role model for the? It's like a basis for, for it, but it's not implemented. You just know like it's gonna have it, but you don't know like the details. It's a, it's a blueprint. <laughs> it's a it's a yeah, don't try to get too philosophical on me. Okay, it's gonna be the idea of creating, and then the, we're gonna see in future that we are, no. It just enforces forces the derived class to have. And what happens if the derived class doesn't implement? So if I have a derived class out of displayable and it doesn't implement the display, what's going to happen to it? You don't, the person with the microphone doesn't need to talk. OK. You already got, you didn't get that thing for, for final yet? You have it, so give it to the next person. So, <laughs> so if somebody inherits something from display, what, uh, from the displayable class and doesn't implement the display, what happens? It becomes, she gave, he gave it away, it's going to become an abstract base class. It's not an interface anymore, but it's an abstract base class. Shush! Okay, let people get their marks for heaven's sake. Uh, you're discussing, yeah. Okay, so, so that's that. So now, what I want to do, I want to create something. Else. And although this displays an imaginary type of a base class, base, uh, imaginary virtual uh, function, which is a, um, a pure virtual function, I can still implement functions and methods, helper functions that use those. So the descendants can use it. The derived class can use it. So essentially, let's say if I have a class called container, and this container of mine is inheriting from displayable, and is actually implementing the display, I do not need to implement the helper function for it anymore. Why don't I need to imp this, uh, uh, create overload that one for it? Uh, because, because a container is a displayable class, it can actually use that one, and when the displayable reference pointing to a container calls the display, automatically the latest version of display is called, hence container will be, will be displayed. Are we good down to this point? And this container is a very simple thing. It has an operator plus in it, um, a binary operator plus, which, um, uh, uh, which means you can have uh, uh, without a side effect because as you see over here, it is returning a, a container by the uh, value and also at the same time, it is uh, uh, um, a constant operator plus, which means it doesn't change the container. Therefore, uh, it is uh, a binary operator with no side effect. Essentially, two containers, we want to find out what is the sum of two containers. So I create a temporary nameless container out of the data of the first one, the left one, which is this, and the data of the second one. And what I do, I return that temporary nameless uh, by value, and everything is set, and container is uh, uh, added by another container. I can do the exact same thing for another class. Let's say I have a class that is supposed to hold a mark test or something. If I create a class like that, definitely that class is displayable too. And uh, the, it has an operator plus to add two marks, first mark and second mark. Well, we know marks cannot, wow. <laughs> we know, how did it stand on that thing? It was actually, it was like, on the, on the <laughs> 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 
All right. So, so uh, yeah, operator plus over there is for the mark is exactly like operator pl plus for the container, but it is a little different inside when it actually adds the two marks mark values that make sure it's not more than 100. If the sum of the two marks becomes 120, it makes it 100. It cannot go above 100. Um, and that's that. We could do a, a minus 2. So is it? Uh, it is an integer, right? So we could add another thing to make sure that it's not negative 2. If it's negative, we make it 0. So we could have done that. But I just wanted to give an example that the plus is working that way. So. All right. So let's say, so we have these things. Let's just keep them like that. We don't want to see them for now. I'm just going to uh, collapse them so we can actually focus on what we're going to create over here. Let's say I have a function, and its job is to uh, add two things, return the value that it's being that the, the two things have and return this function and display it so i'm going to write the function say i want to do it for integers so i'm going to so integer uh uh sum and display or i'm going to say display sum display sum i'm going to get integer a and integer b so that's pretty simple and straightforward, right? So what it does, it says integer uh, c is equal to a plus b. It finds what is the sum, or integer sum. And then it's going to say c out. Uh, what is it going to say? Uh, integer um, sum is uh, sum. So it shows it, and at the end, it returns it. OK, so if I have two integers over here, let, uh, integer, uh, what do I do for here? So not to have the same name. So in here, uh, uh, I'm going to put first and second to make sure there's nothing over there. So I'm going to say f and s. So in here, I'm going to, I just don't want to have the same name variable, that's all. Integer a says 10, and b is uh, 20, and I have a c. Now in here I can say uh, uh, c is equal to display sum, and I'm going to put uh, a and b over here. And if I say over here c out uh, uh, the display sum function returned, I'm going to return the c. Okay. So if I run the program, you know what the output is. Just going to add them all up. And three years later, when it compiles, we're going to see this coming up, right? So this is the display sum function that actually finds the sum and displays it. And this one is display sum function that returns third. Are we OK with this? Beautiful. So now I like this function so much, I want to be able to do this for doubles. So what I do, I know that I can overload, right? So I'm just going to change what is needed over here to turn to a double. So for this thing to work, this must be a double, right? This must be a double. This must be a double. Actually, let's do something else before doing this. Let's have a series of doubles in here. So I'm going to go double uh, x set to 10.1, and y set to 20.2, and I'm going to have a double z, and I'm going to run it the exact same way that I did it for that. I'm going to say uh, z is x and y, and I'm going to say display some function returns it. First of all, will this thing work, or it's going to give me an error? It should work. But well, what happens behind the scene? So when display sum for x and y is called, it looks for a display sum for, with doubles. It can't find one. It says, wait a minute. I have a display sum. Let me look at that. It looks at that and it says it's receiving integers. Can I cast doubles to integers? Yes, it can. So it casts the x that is 10.1 over there and yada, 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 right? So the result is not going to be 
30.3, it's going to be 30. Are we okay with this? Which is not desirable for us. So this was, this is some kind of a polymorphism that we have even in C language. As you see, that function has the same name and is working in different ways. Although the ways are not what we intend to, but it's working. So it is working for two different types, and the function and name is the same. This type of polymorphism is called coercion. Hello? This type of polymorphism is called coercion, which means it coerces the, the doubles into an integer and passes it to display. Are we okay with this? All right? But we don't want that. We want the, the double thingy to work proper. So I'm going to say I have no problem doing that because I know in C++ when I create a function, the function is called based on the signature that is being actually called. So if I create a double over here that receives a double, and the sum over there is double. And in here, I can actually go uh, cout.precision2 uh, uh, and cout. How do I set it so it actually the precision thingy works? Set uh, f to iOS fixed, right? Yeah, iOS fixed. And and now another display is actually being called because I overloaded it, right? Are we okay? You understand that? Beautiful. So if I run this program, we'll see that happens, right? Or we can, what we can do over here is uh, forget about this and just, we're going to put this one over here. So we're going to say everything is that way. Eh, actually, are we okay with this, ladies and gents? So this thing is working perfectly for me. What if I want to do the exact same thing for a couple of containers? What do I do? What I need to do is to just copy this over here, and instead of double, I'm going to have a container. Right? Right? And in here, I'm going to say container A, capital A, of course, or container C, set to 100, and container D, set to 200, and container uh, E, just like that. Now I can say over here the exact same thing. I can copy like this, and in here I can say C. Oh, sorry, E is equal to container and that one, right? And if I run this program, will it work? Pardon me? Because it... <laughs> okay, now will it work? Okay, we have to think. So when immediately when you see something complicated is being called, implement its call and see what does it look like. Okay? So the function call for this will be something like this. Display uh, container F equals to C, right? And container S set to D, and then it returns that one, right? So when the function is called, that's what's going to happen, correct? Now, in line 65, when I say container F is equal to C, what type of con constructor will be called? Copy constructor. Why copy constructor? Can anybody explain? It creates a new object out of an. Yeah, but when I say what type, you said copy constructor. Correct. What co 
Copy constructor is a special, although it's a special constru constructor, but it falls into a category of a wider type of constructors, which is a assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor. Right? Assignment at the moment. So first, it's a one argument constructor. Now, what type of an argument it is? It's an object of the same type. Therefore, the one argument constructor is a copy constructor. Beautiful. So copy constructor will be called. And at line 51, when sum is returning, we said that by natural rule of C++, C++ language, when an object is returned by value, what does it, what does it, what happens? A temporary nameless copy of that will be returned. So another copy constructor is called over there, right? So that's the rule we need to know. Anything past return value, a copy of it will be returned, not itself. Because if we return the sum, sum is going to die inside the function, and nothing's going to be out there. We have to copy, otherwise we're not going to have a sum. So that's the rule we need to know. First of all, when the function call is happening, one argument constructor, same object, copy constructor. In line 51, sum is returning, returning by value. That's another copy constructor. When an object, when an object copy constructor is called, what should be your concern? Hmm? Yes, it's the same class is being copied. But when you copy a class to another class, what should be your concern when a class is being copied? Yes, if it has resources, a copy constructor must exist. If we know all classes have a copy constructor created by compiler, right? And that copy constructor is a dumb copy constructor. It's a Xerox copy of the other one. It just gets that one and does a binary copy bit copy out of that one, a bitwise copy, bytewise copy, whatever you call, byte by byte will copy one to another. Therefore, if it has, if it has resources outside of the class, we're going to have memory leak. So we need to know if the con con container needs uh, the rule of three. It, does, it doesn't have any resources out of it, so we are in the clear. If that's the case, then the function will be called. And the other thing, the other special thing, at line 49, What's happening at line 49? I have a plus operator between two containers, correct? Therefore, I need a plus binary plus operator, which I happen to have in my constructor, correct? All right. So if I do something like this, I'll see that the container is called to. And when I actually run it, we will see it's going to say CN is 300 and display some funk returned 30. What? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to change the other one to, 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 to E. Oh, so three? Actually, more than that. So copy can, so for that, can display some function to work first. Constructor needs, by the way, this is a question for your final test. So write it down. This is your, so when a function, when you have a function, I'm going to ask you what special things, what this object, this class needs to have so this function can work for it. You need to be able to identify it. This is a question for, the, for, for final test. It has been for in past 20 years. So you have to, looking at that, you have to say container passed by value, copy constructor. So one copy constructor. Number two, at line four, again, one argument constructor. First of all, it's a one argument constructor. What is it? A equal between two containers and should return a container. That's number two. Plus operator should work between two containers. That's number two. Number three, sum should be insertable into O stream. Sum should be insertable into O stream. So that's number three. 51, copy construction, we already covered it, so we don't need to mention it. So three things my object should have. Copy construction, plus operator, and insertion into C out, into O stream. 
These are the three things, and you got the three marks for it. Yes. The first one went on up when a, an argument is passed by value. Okay. So that one Line number 65. Okay. When you actually write what is the mechanism of a function call, you will notice that you have, because that's, that's, the, that's the argument that you have, right? And the arguments are set to the values that are passed to them, right? So you're going to have container f equals to c. Therefore, that's a copy construct. Okay? Are we all? Yes. The constructor is not needed to. The only thing, I don't know. See, you have to look at the container and see if container has resources. If container has resources, then destructor is a must for it to exist. It has nothing to do with being copied. Destructor is an essence of classes with resources. There is no question about that. No, because for the thing to exist, it, it, is a, it, it has nothing to do with this function. What this function requires, it's copy constructor plus operator insertion into O string. Are we good? Are we good? Yes. So I like this function so much, I'm going to see if it can work with marks. So what I'm going to do over here is this. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to see. So how can I change this to mark? All I need to do is to change this to mark, right? This is very boring. You keep writing the same thing over and over. Mark, 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 and yeah, it's going to work with marks, right? And now if I actually create a mark over here, mark um, M set to uh, um, 65, uh, N uh, set to uh, 70 and uh, O over here, I can actually uh, write the exact same thing for it, which is essentially O is set to display sum of M and N. And in here, I'm going to display the O. And we know that that display function that we have is going to have mark F and mark s so essentially the same thing applies for mark 2 which means mark must have mark must be copied properly so we can't say it has to have a copy constructor it should be copied properly so copying should be done properly that's a good answer for it what does that function what does the function uh, display some needs at line 54 it needs mark to be copied properly, it needs mark to be able to have a binary plus with an and uh, so binary plus mark should be defined for it, and also it should be insertable into C out. And because mark is a child of displayable two, we know that is absolutely no problem. Why the second one is white over here? Eh, no idea. Anyways, let's run it, and that's what we're gonna have. Any questions down to this point, ladies and gents? Suggestions? Objections? All right. Now, my question is, what do you find similar between these four functions? What is similar between these four functions? Not semical. Let's call it identical. What is identical between these four functions that we created? You said logic? Darn it, you got the 2%. It's logic. <laughs> it's their logic that is the same. Their signature are not the same. The signatures are similar. The only thing that is different between their signature is their types. And their logic is identical. So essentially, so shush, don't answer anymore. Let people. It's <laughs> <laughs> so 
A dash identical logic lo logic and similar uh, signature dot cpp right what happened okay i renamed it and you say whoa i didn't know that renaming is such a an interesting thing <laughs> oh my god he renamed it such a genius thing all right so i can have a these days probably a five-year-old because they know how the computers work right because everything is similar over here, I can just say, hey, I'm not going to write these, these code anymore. What is needed to be changed in here if, they wanna, if somebody wants to rewrite it? In here, it should be a, a type, correct? And then another type, correct? And another type, correct? And a type over here. I can give it to anyone and tell them, please write this for Mark now, which means search and replace the marks that the types with the mark right now i can say write this with for an integer they just search and replace the types it's correct you good you can actually tell to the compiler to do that for us so i can actually tell to the compiler, and these things don't need to be types i can write over here oh, oh okay Because some people are going to say, so I'll put away that set. Change the hoo hoo to whatever I want out of this. So what do I do in here? I'm going to say, this is a template. And the type name is hoo hoo. Done. And by writing something like this, at any moment, this place sum is called, the compiler looks at it. Can I fill that template with the function call signature? Yes, I can. Poof, it creates it. So the first one is this display sum is int int, creates int int. In the other one, display sum is double double, makes double double. Container, container. Con so it will generate it for you. So you don't have to write the code over and over and over and over. The only thing you need to do is very tight implement uh, documentation for that template because people don't know that this, this template how what happening inside it knows that it's going to display the sum how it's happening it doesn't know because it doesn't know you have to tightly document it and when i told you this is a question for the test and i told you when a function is over there what is needed for the type that's what it is. So essentially, the documentation for it, uh, see, and uh, these days all the IDEs have the tool for the very uh, uh, detailed documentation, which is putting three slashes and poof, it, they do this. Okay? And now in here I'm going to explain uh, uh, displays the sum of the two types and returns them them and in here I'm going to continue needs uh, 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 it needs uh, a copying copying uh, insertion 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 into O stream operator operator if you want to go to new line because this is uh, an xml you need to do this i think otherwise it's not going to go to there so needs copying insertion to all stream needs copying copying as we can actually put a dash let's see if it's going to work i think I, it works a uh, copying uh and in here i'm going to go br operator like that I'm gonna go BR over here again oh shoot you cannot do this uh, what is the HTML for less than ampersand uh, LT that's that right something like that 
So operator needs uh, uh, insertion into O stream. And why O stream is capitalized, I have no idea. O stream. And what was the last thing it need? Uh, operator plus, right? Needs uh, uh, operator plus four types for for the type. Okay. Now in here, I'm going to say the type. F is the left argument, and it's the right argument. Whatever, and returns uh, uh, the sum um, with type. <laughs> okay. So when you actually create something like this, then if you actually hover over it, you will see that it. It says the XML contains invalid, yada, yada. End tag summary does not match starting tag. What? OK. Uh. I think now it will work. Let me check one more time. Yeah, there you go. So now we'll see that it actually goes like that. Because it's XML, you have to put the end tag for it. So this displays the sum. So now you hover over it. It's going to tell you how it works. So you know if you. So if your object has a deleted copy construction, it's not going to work for it. As easy as that. Okay. And the problem is that if 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 actually that happens. So say in here, I'm coming in here, and in my container, I'm going to say, I'm going to say container uh, const con container reference set to delete so I'm preventing copying right if I so when I do something like this you will see that this one's gonna have trouble and if you compile it you will see that the error message is very awkward no Now it, it wasn't that awkward. So yeah, so it's gonna say this is gonna be. So it gives you an error that that's, that can't be done. So you have to. So um, if if they actually if they actually hovered, they would have known that it's supposed to get copied and yada yada yada, right? So what do I do? I'm gonna remove that. Are we okay down to this point, ladies and gents? That's the easiest template. So it's a function template. Anytime you have anything that carries, uh, that carries uh, what you may call it, uh, uh, an identical logic, uh, you can apply it to everything that you have and very simply uh, document it so people can use it if they want to. So, so now that we have this one, let's save it. Ah, that's the next thing that I'm not, um, so can you hold that question? Okay. Uh, I'm going to explain that in 20 minutes. The answer is in the header, but don't have a CPP file. So it, what it, we'll come to it and you'll see why. I'm going to explain. Why template CPP file? There is one huge rule in computer is if you are confused about something, the compiler will be too. Okay? So remember that nothing happens by magic. So, and I'll explain, when, when we come to it, I explained exactly how templates are created and how they are running, right? So, let me, now that we, now that you asked the question, let me mention it. So, how did we, how the compiler cre recreates the functions? It looks that the function, if the signature is a match, it copies the logic for all of them, right? Now, if you have a header file of templates, and a CPP file. When compiler compiles, the only thing it has access to is the header file, right? So what it can see is the signature of the function. It has no access to the logic, correct? Therefore, it won't work. 
That's why templates entirely should exist in header file. There is no CPP file for a template. You can't do that. Okay, so that's the answer. But we'll come to it soon. So templates, if I told you create, and I'm going to, I'm going to create a, say, create a complete module for a, for a function template such and such, and I want to see if you're going to create a CPP or just tell me it's a header file. Okay? So a module for a template is only header file. There is no CPP file. Everything entirely must be created in the header file. Are we good? You okay? All right. So did I copy this? Did I? No. So B uh, template intro. All right. So that's that. I'm going to add something to these containers and the, and the mark. Let's say, let's say the, let's say containers data is double. Okay? Yeah, let's say containers data is double, not a, uh, and I'm going to remove this. So it's going to be double data over here. Do we have anywhere else that I need to mention that? Double data, yada, yada, yada. So that's. And also, I'm going to add one feature to this, which is checking for equality. I want to see if I have a double value, if that double value if that double value is equal to the double value that I have inside the container. And how do I do that? You know we can never test double values for equality from IPC 144. We know that because doubles are not exact values. When you write 2, it's actually 1.9999999999. When you write 2, it could be 2.00000001. So it is never precise. But for compiler, so two variables that hold two, when you print, they're both two. But when you actually compare them, it's going to say false because the bit patterns are not, are not identical. Right? For that, we need to have some kind of a precision for our equality test at all times. And that's why in here, I'm going to have uh, check, check, check the difference between the data and value being l more than minus 0 0.001, which means a thousandth of a cc, and the difference would be less than 0 0.001. So it falls between the category of being very close to zero, which is very fine by me. Okay? So that means they are, the two are equal. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the mark to see if a mark value is certain thing. And I'm going to create, but this one I don't need to test anything because they are integers. I just check to see if the values are the same or not. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? All right. So now that I have these values, now that I have these, two, these values, I can actually give you more examples on this. So that type thingy, let it. Let's say I want to write a function to see how many elements of an array have a specific type of value in them. 
I'm going to do it for marks. So I have an array of marks, and I want to see how many of the marks are 80%. I want to test that. So what do I do? First of all, I need to know how many. How many is size t? We know that, right? How many? And I'm going to call this count because I'm counting stuff, right? Then in here, I'm going to say I have a constant mark array, right? Mark array. Let's put it like this. No, no, mark. Shh, shh, seriously. Um, mark, mark array MA, something like that. And what else I need to know? I need to know what is the size of the array because it's an array we cannot say. And I want to test it with a specific mark value. A mark value is integer, right? So I'm going to write over here int uh, key to search for. I'm searching for this value, right? That's the key to search for. So now I'm going to do my search. How do I do it? I'm going to say, what do I do? I'm going to say size t. Count. That's the count that I have. Let's make it zero. What else do I do? I'm going to go for uh, size I set to zero, i less than size, and i plus plus. Now I know that my mark has the equal thingy overloaded for it. Because of that, I can, I'm going to say, uh, what do I say? I'm going to say if uh, m a i is equal to the key value, whatever the value is, C and T plus plus. Right? Correct? And after I do that, what am I going to do? I'm going to return the C and T. Correct? Right? Now I can actually have an array. I don't need this anymore. Now what I can have is actually an array of Marks, darn it. I thought I have it over here. I can copy. I did not. So in here, it's going to be uh, mark um, um, M. Seriously? M and values of it will be mark uh, 50. So this one is going to be 60, uh, 34, 89, 60, 33, 99, 100, and I don't know, 56. I want to know how many of these marks are 60. So they're a total of, did I put only two? So this one is 62, okay? So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I have 9 of them. I don't need to put it in there, so we know it's 9, right? So I'm going to say what? I'm going to say uh, size uh, t uh, uh, mark uh, c and t, right? And, and then I'm going to say count. Uh, M, C, and T, I'm going to say count of uh, M, size of 9, and I want to see how many 60s I have, right? And I want to say uh, there are, and actually show the array too. I want to display the contents of the array. So in here, I'm going to say void display or uh, uh, PRN array, PRN marks. So in here, I'm going to say constant uh, mark, again, mark array. And I need the size of the array size. And I'm going to go for size t i set to 0, i less than size and i plus plus. In here, I'm going to say if uh, i is equal to 0, if i is not equal to 0, uh, print uh, a comma, right? Uh, actually, let's 
string like that. Uh, then after that, C out uh, MAI. And at the end, I'm going to go C out new line. So that's going to print all the marks. So I'm going to say uh, there are there are M, C, and T 60s in the following. Okay? And L, and I'm going to say over there, PR and marks, and I'm going to put the M over there and 9. So, writing this program, it goes through all the marks and yada, 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 right? It shows all the marks. That's a 360s in the following, and it shows the marks. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? I love this. I want to use this for all the arrays that I have. So, what do I do? I am going to convert this to a template. Now, this template's a template of mine. How many types does it need? It needs two. One is the type of the array. The other one is the type of the key. Because the key is integer for counter, right? So it needs two different types. If that's the case, I put two different types. No problem. So what do I do? I'm going to say over here, template uh, type name. OK, so array type. That's the first one. And the other one is what? Type name. By the way, <clears throat> old C++ writes class over here. It's the same thing. If you write class, it's as if you are writing type name. It was old C++, everything was a class, right? Class is a type, right? So they wrote over their class, and then people started whining. Oh, it's a class. Oh, this. Okay, get the heck with it. I'm going to rename it to type name, so you're going to be happy. Okay, so class, type name, potatoes, potatoes. I'm going to write the class over here so we know. Okay, so it's going to be key type, right? So these are the two things that I have, the array type and the key type. Now, my array type, do I need to change size t? No, it's the number of things that I'm talking It doesn't matter what type. Do I need to change mark? Yes, that's the array type. Right? Woo! What did I do? What did I do? Copy. So this is going to be the array type. And then the key type. Do I need to change the size t? No, that's the size of the array. The, do I need to change the type, key type? Yes. I'm going to put key type over here. Now, this is CNT. Do I need to change it? No. Size, do I need to change any of these? No, I think everything's good. Okay, now, if I want to actually document this, now you've got to tell me. What are the things that type needs over here that we need to document? <laughs> what do we need? <laughs> After this one for a break. No. No, I, I didn't talk about logic. I talked about what requirements needed for this. Does array, does array type be, is array type being copied anywhere? No. No, there's no assignment, nothing. When, when, when you actually call the function, it's an array, and we know array is actually address of something being passed. Because it's address, we don't care. There is no copy construction of any kind. It's just an array being passed. So, pardon me? For what? Thank you. So, key needs to be copied properly. Because key is, got a, key is being passed by value. Let me bring the, the thing up. So when we look at this, key is being passed by value. Because key is being passed by value, so, so key type, key type must be safe to, to copy, to be copied. OK? So that's number one.
What else? You guys don't talk. Okay. Someone else. Tell me. Because <laughs> you keep asking all the questions. And you don't too, you don't neither. Huh? Yeah, yeah, comparison operator. So that equal equal operator between key and type. So I have to say, I have to say uh, array type operator equal equal key type must be defined. Correct? I don't care what is the type. I don't care what is the other one. And, and, and extremely important is this. Because a constant thing is being passed, right? So the left one has to be constant. Right one, we don't care. Right? Now that key type could be constant. It doesn't matter or not constant. We don't care. Okay? If it's, if we already mentioned that key type must be able to be copied, that's not important. Okay? Because it's the same thing. If we didn't have that, if that was a, if this was a constant reference, if it was something like this, then we had to write over here const reference over here. Or type. Or, or, so this, this, this has to be const reference to, okay? Or uh, pass by value, one of the two. But I didn't do that, so we are not doing it. Again, you have to, in this case, you have to be, you have to have obsessive compulsive disorder when it comes to these things. You have to look to see if anything is going to go wrong, because somebody's going to use it and it's going to go wrong. You have to make sure that you, you tell them what's going on. And that's that. There is nothing else that we need to do. So ne next, I want to be able to print the array. OK? To print the array, what do I need? So in here, I'm going to say template again, type name. And what do I do? I'm going to say uh, the only thing that I need to pass is the array type, right? Array type. That's it. So the only thing that these this needs is the only thing that this this thing needs is to write uh, that um, uh, array type i needs to be insertable into O string. That's all. Uh, of course, we're going to write. You're going to write in a summary, what does it do? I'm not writing that. You're going to write it like prints the uh, prints a comma separated uh, uh, line of the array elements. I'm not mentioning that. So what it does, just the special cases. Those are your questions for the tests. OK, so I'm going to ask you what specific, so I'm going to say, Types uh, involve in the thing, and uh, you have to mention what did, what do they, what do they need to have. <laughs> so you not only write the template, but also so a template question. And I'm, again, I'm going to tell you to create a module for a template. That so, got to write the template for me. After you write the template for me, you need to. What do you need to do? You need to explain to me what specific features. The type the template must support. I have to tighten that screw. It's look wobbly. All right. Okay. So now, if I if I look at this, it will still work perfectly for this. So uh, are we okay? Everything is done. So let's run it and see if it's going to work. If I run it, we will see it still works for that, right? But the good thing is that I cannot use, I can now use it for anything. Let's say I have an array of integers. Let's say I have an array of integers. And I want to know how many threes I have in that integer. I can use it. So I can actually, I can actually write something like this. 
and say count in here I put integer array and I'm gonna say there how many do I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so I have ten integers over there and I want to know three so this happens to be the same type actually not same type that's an integer uh, pointer and the other one is just an integer right so if I do it like this it's gonna work exactly the same way and in here I'm gonna say I a that not MC yeah, MC and can be uh, overwritten by that it's okay and in here I'm gonna say I a so now it's gonna do the exact same thing for the array of integers and the exact same thing for array of containers So I can have an array of containers, and I can uh, use the exact same thing for the array of containers. Where is my array of containers call over here? It's CA, right? So CA. So in here, it's going to be MCNT is equal to count of Area of container. I want to know how many hundred and ones I have in there. And uh, uh, in here, it's going to be CA. And you run it, you're going to have it work for that one too. So this is a beautiful. Oh, it failed. Did I go too much? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Eight, 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 eight. Try to print another one. There you go. That's better. All right. Uh, are you, yes. Yes. Or the same type. Even. It doesn't make if it makes sense. Yeah, as long as it works, you're fine. So you have to you have to cover the thing. So the comparison should work for it between the key type and a thing, and you're okay. So we have an array of both values, and then we pass it up some. Yeah. As long as it has an operative move. Yeah. And you see these templates like this, mid and a half of them in C plus plus. Anything that you can think of, you want to sort things. There is something in the STL, standard template library. You want to search uh, with multi-thread search so it searches faster, breaks down the thing. There is a standard template for that. Anything you want, you think of, any algorithm you think of, you want to multiply element to a value and then find the sum, you can find an STL for that that does it for you. This is 345. You're going to learn all these here for 345. So this is how STLs are, and um, what you need to do, what you need to understand is that all the things that we have over here, if we want to use them, so in, so if we want to use them, I cannot put them in a CPP or uh, CPP and a header file. They must all reside inside one header file. So I'm going to add over here new item. Uh, what do I call it? My templates. Hopefully, you're going to name it properly for something meaningful, right? So it goes right over here. You add the you add the the thing that you have you need. Okay. I'm lazy to write the safeguards. I'm writing pragma once, but please write the safeguards. And and now in here, I can actually include that header file. So I can say include. Uh, template my template.h and it's going to work exactly the same way but again remember everything the code everything you are writing must be in the header file are we okay with this one more thing to explain let's say So in here, I'm going to say C uh, 
uh, templates with many types. You can write as many types as you want, but don't go bananas. Okay? Make it in a way that makes sense. Don't change everything to type. It's going to be confusing for yourself too and for compiler. Compiler looks at it and it's like, what the heck am I supposed to do with it? So be reasonable. Okay? Usually one type is, in, is enough. You don't need to have three different types, but anyways. So what if I wrote the example somewhere. Ah, oh, okay, so yeah, let's do this. So we have, let's say I have a sort template, a template that sorts between uh, sorts an array in an ascending order. I'm going to put it in my templates. So this is my sort algorithm over here. So it's a bubble sort. I have an array type, okay? And it has a size. And then I'm going to do a bubble sort through it. And I'm going to call a swap function over there. And my swap function is a template too. Two things we learned from here. Template only affects the scope that comes after. So if you have three different things, you have to have template for every single scope. OK? So the first one, I'm putting a swap. I'm going to say swap between the two. As you see, that needs copy constructor and copy assignment. And if we look at this one, uh, the, the sort thingy that we have, it needs greater than operator uh, set for it to be able to sort it. Are we good with this? Are we OK with this? So now. It means if I want to sort the array of containers that I have, to sort the array of containers that I have, I need to have those operators overloaded for it, correct? So I'm going to bring the containers over here, the container and the mark, and I add it to my main. Now, now I'm going to change it. But you will see that I'm going to have a trouble over here. The trouble is that container is good. It has the operator greater than set for it. So it can be sorted with that template of mine. Correct? But when you look at this one, the compiler, the, the, uh, the template is not going to work with it because it doesn't have greater than. It has less than. What do I do? Remember, you can always overload a template. Your overload supersedes any template creation. So I can rewrite that sort specifically for my mark and saying not less than, so it sorts it, right? But this is an overload of the template that I have. If you add an overload, you're essentially specializing this overload saying, hey, don't create anything for this, I already have it. If there is anything other than this, generate it for me. So if I want to sort the containers, it works with the container. If I want to sort integers, it works with it. Doubles work with it. But if I'm sorting marks, my overload will be selected. Of course, in this overload, the swap, the swap template is still used. But who cares? Swap works for everything. Right? Are we OK? Because it's a regular thing, you can have, you can have a, you can have a, what you call, what should we call it? So, if, if you are creating a specialized overload to add to a template, now you put the, uh, what should we call it? The uh, prototype inside the header file and the body the CPP file, because that's a regular function. So now, if I want to have my template created and specialize something for, there is a way to specialize a template too. We're not going to talk about it. That's, I think, three, four, five. I'm going to take a look at your notes if you have it. I'm going to explain it. If not, just remember, if you have some C++ code that resides beside your template, then your template needs a CPP file because you don't want to carry the code inside your header file. That's going to cause trouble. 
you need to have only the thing. So if you have something like this, you can actually add it. So for this one, because it's, uh, because it's a specialization, if I want to put this thing in my template, now I need a CPP file for it. So I need to add over here, new item, my template. Dot CPP, and I can put uh, this one over here and say, I don't need to even include that, that one, but doesn't matter. Include my template.h, and then I take this one. Uh, of course, shoot, I need mark. Uh, can I do forward declaration for this? No, I can't because this is happening. Darn it. Anyways, um, I need to have a header file for Mark. Forget it. Just, you know what I mean, right? I don't want to create a header file for Mark now. <laughs> I'm too lazy. But, uh, but that's what happens. So if you actually want to have a specific source created for your template, then you have to create the CPP file for it. But uh, again, that's not in this in, in OP244. This was just an example. Let me just uh, say don't save and don't even create it. I'm going to come back over here. Just remember that... Overload it comes first. Now the mark can be sorted. Everything can be sorted over here. And oh, we're going to be OK. What's going on? Are we OK? Templates are funny. Never heard that one before. Uh, so this, what do I have for, the, for displaying functions? Oh, I didn't bring the displays? Where are my displays? Oh, it is in a thing. Uh, it's called Oh, PRN marks? Shoot. PRN array. Or display. That's better. So I can come over here. Yeah. OK, so yes. It's, it, it's, so you, the funny thing is that when you do something like that, the compiler come. The compiler doesn't even compile. Does it compile? Yeah. I don't even know. Well, well, probably linker is going to tell you there is no. Right. Yeah. So the linker sees that, oh, you're missing a plus. Or even like a plus. Well, that's why we get the squeaky. But in case that we're doing something like this, where we're having the CPU specifically for the mark rate, now all of a sudden, if that specific version, there's only the uh, prototype for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it works. So it works. Now in this case, the linker doesn't the, realize, but the compiler is going to be like, Compiler creates a prototype and the function exists, everything's good. Yeah. Because we only realize compiled handle. Exactly. So what again to uh, let me just see if it if it runs over here or I made a boo-boo. I just want to make sure it runs. Yeah, please run, please run. Okay, it runs. Okay, so so uh, what I want to mention over here will be this. Give me two seconds, and, and that's the end of the class. Don't worry, we're going to leave early. This is the end of templates. And your responsibility to go read templates, study it, understand it, come to the lab, ask questions about it, and then we're going to do the quiz on it. OK, so the quiz on templates is on the lab that you're coming on Friday. So read the templates, see what is missing. The rest of it is online. You know that, right? So the things. And it's, and it's due, I think, tomorrow night, so hopefully you're done by then. One thing I have to, I have to, let me just, uh, give me a second. Where is it? Uh... So as I was saying, uh, we mentioned about how the compilers work in C++. This is, I brought this picture in this class before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is how the compilers work, right? So the, 
the reason that I wanted to mention is that if, let's say, 2.cpp, by mistake, is the one that actually has uh, the template with a header file and a CPP, then when the compiler is compiling the, th the third one, problem would be that the third one will be copied like this. So when the third one is being copied, this is what the compiler sees. And because of it, if you have any template in your 2.cpp header file, then the body is not there to generate any code for you. And you're not going to have it. So the compiler won't give you an error because the call will be translated. OK? The call, the function call, will be translated. And when it comes to the second one and compiling the second one, no code will be created for it. Because you have the function templates, and they're never used. And the template code, that's a beautiful thing, is only generated if you call it. Because no call has been made for it, two object, the, the result of the compilation of 2.cpp is nothing. It's an object file that is empty. Yes? Doesn't matter. No, in, in that case, in that case, the header file is compiled. When it sees that you are actually using it, it probably won't actually. Yeah, it's not promised that I don't know. I, I've no. I, I've never done this before. I, it, it never happened to me before, so I really don't know. Okay, quite frankly, I don't know what's going to happen if you don't have it. So I don't want to say if you make a mistake how it's going to work still. No, I'm not going to do that. If you make a mistake, prepare for it. It's going to, that's going to crash. So I'm not going to do that. So, so keep that in mind. Uh, and that's that. And that's the reason that, uh, that you cannot have uh, a module of, header, of templates with CPP file. Everything has to be in the header file. That's it. That's templates. We're done. OK? Questions? Can I have that uh, <laughs> baton that is standing upright? OK. Questions? Question one? Question two? Question three? All right. Thank you. And you know, as soon as I turn off the computer, people are going to come and ask questions. Did I tell you? Oh, for that? No, no, for that. For that is gone. Of course we have class. Okay. Hey, guys, hey, hey, hey. And I just stopped recording. Why don't you? Did I stop recording? No, I didn't. It's actually recording. So, guys, take advantage of this. Every single class that we come, it's a review class. You can ask anything that you want to be reviewed. I'll review it for you. And if we don't have any review, bring your computer. Maybe you have a problem at your workshop. Your milestone, things like that, I'll help you. Okay? So, every single class that we have, yes. I don't understand the purpose of that, but shh. Okay, sure. No, I mean, like, I, I can just come up with something, say, just for everybody, write this and see what. Sure. If, if that's what you want, and everybody's OK with it, sure, why not? OK, I can come up with, like, on the fly, come up with a question and see how you do it. OK, you're not going to submit it, but you're going to show it to me. Anything else? Any public question, let's put it that way. OK, I'm going to shut this down, pack it up, put it over here, wait for me to do that, then you can come here. Yeah. OK. Okay.